of walking with j -Bo and almost daily walking vlog. Hope you're all having a wonderful evening. It rained all day today and I have an opportunity to walk this evening. It's not too late. It's also getting milder. It's 52 degrees, but it feels more moisture in the air. It's not, uh, it's not cold like when the air is dry. So anyway, I'm going to do about five miles tonight. I got to watch both Trump rallies today. Pretty good stuff. And, uh, you know, it was pretty uh, stupid of Joe Biden, President Biden, or Resident Biden, as I call him. Called Trump supporters garbage. And, you know, and it's a stupid, unforced error by Joe Biden because this has really fueled up a big storm, much bigger than Hillary's calling voters deplorables. Joe Biden just said 250 million Americans are garbage. I don't know how you feel about that, but he's the president of the United States saying that about fellow citizens. And it's nice of him to finally say what he really thinks of people that are not liberal. Democrats are trying to downplay it, but it's not working. It was said, and uh, that's that. So this definitely does give Trump some fuel, just like the McDonald's thing did. But this was even bigger because today, this evening, when he landed in Wisconsin, he got off the plane with a reflective vest on and he climbed into a garbage truck <laughs> I gotta flip the camera around. So our beautiful president got on the plane, got onto the garbage truck, and said, wasn't that a nice thing that Biden said about the American people, calling him garbage? And he's sitting there in a garbage truck. And uh, what's really funny about it, is the whole side of the garbage truck has a big Trump Advance 2024 logo on the side. And it's like, where the hell do you get a garbage truck 
made up to look like the Trump campaign literally overnight. Talk about having your crap together, right? So, it was pretty interesting. One of the funniest things I've ever seen. And uh, that was a good one for the history books. So that's pretty awesome. And uh, so anyway, he did that rally and then he did the one after, uh, before that, earlier today. And uh, tomorrow I believe he's going to um, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And he's also going to Henderson, Nevada. Now the Albuquerque, New Mexico one is at 12 noon, but that's 12 noon mountain time. Uh, so I think that's two hours difference from us, I think. Which would make sense because then he's going to be in Nevada, which is Pacific time. So he's going to do the New Mexico one, which uh, is 12 noon in New Mexico, mountain time. And that's two hours, so that'll be two o'clock on the East Coast. And then he's going to go to Nevada for Pacific time. So he'll actually save an hour because of the time zone difference. Then he's going to do one in Henderson, Nevada at 2 o'clock Pacific time, which would be 5 o'clock here. And he always runs late anyway, so I'm sure he'll run late again. But anyway, that's the scheduled time for the rallies tomorrow. Looks like he's going to be doing uh, a couple of them a day. It's like he's done in the past. He doesn't have anything scheduled after November 2nd. So I don't know if that's going to be it or if he's going to go right up to the day before voting. I don't know. But as it is right now, the last one's scheduled November 2nd. Uh, can be in Virginia. Salem, Virginia. Very important one. Now, that's going to lead me into my next segment. This is kind of important uh, because the media is playing their shenanigans again with polling. And uh, remember I told you they were going to do that. And not as, I don't want to make it sound like I'm some kind of guru or anything. I'm not. I'm just, when I say, remember when I said, I'm not trying to be grandiose. Like remember what I said. I'm not doing anything like that. But anyway, I did say that they were going to say that the polls are tightening up. They're tightening up. Head to head. It's a dead heat. They're whipping out all of that stuff. And the truth of the matter is, is Kamala's losing badly. And uh, this is right on the verge of being a blowout. But I'm not ready to say that yet. I told you, I'm not going to be a homer. I'm not going to root for my team unfairly, unjustly. Uh, this is kind of a big deal. I don't want to jump the gun. I don't want to make it look like, you know, I don't want to tell you, oh, geez, you know, she's doing, she's doing really terrible. Trump's, you know, I don't want to use that, um, we got it in the bag. Don't ever want to say that. Always feel like you're not winning. But that being said, she is pulling $2 million out of North Carolina to advertise somewhere else. While the polling says they're neck and neck in North Carolina, there's no reason, there's no reason for her to pull that money. So, Unless their internal polling shows them something absolutely magical that somebody else's internal polling isn't showing. Republicans have out early voted Democrats there. And it would be a pretty staunch miracle 
for the amount of Republicans that voted that the Republican women are voting against Trump because of the abortion issue. I would find that very hard to believe. It's not within the realm of impossibility, however. That's why I said don't get too high. But if you want to go on the conventional thinking of the way things have always been, conservative women are not uh, whole hog abortionists. You know what I mean? So, and also Trump has made it clear that he doesn't want to ban abortion. He wants the states to decide on it democratically. And uh, so, that's more along the line of conservative thinking and independents and libertarians and... But, I can tell you that there is a record turnout for early voting across the board, uh, especially... It's... Well, first, uh, not to make it sound like it's bad news, I'll say the male part of it first. Male voters are showing up to vote. I don't know why. I don't know what that is. Maybe they just hate Kamala. They're not showing up to vote for her, that's for sure. She's doing terrible among men. Uh, women, on the other hand, really love Kamala. And, uh, and it's because of the abortion issue. The media has been pounding that with a lot of propaganda. And at the end of the day, three Supreme Court justices that Trump approved um, dissolved the Roe v. Wade and sent it back to the states. Some women live in states that they want abortions and now they can't get them. So those are red states, but they're driving the fear that Trump is going to take your rights away as a woman. And they're using fear-mongering in the media, like they always do, uh, to some effect, I have to say. So hopefully, a lot of these women that are showing up to vote are voting for Trump because of other issues, like really important things like paying rent and immigration and safety and things like that. So. Hopefully that's the case. We shall see. But as it is right now, it's looking absolutely lovely for President Trump. It's looking great for President Trump. And the reason why I say that is because I like numbers. I also like common sense. And, uh, while the media is driving the abortion issue because they absolutely want as many women as possible to not vote for Trump, because that's really, that's really Kamala's only path to winning. And the media knows that. It would be possible, it would be possible for Kamala to win with early voting if enough Republican women secretly vote for Kamala. So, I think most people know the likelihood of that's pretty slim, where once they're in that booth, they don't have to tell their husband who they're voting for and they can lie. But I don't think conservative women would do that, to be honest with you. And also, CNN polling came out today and uh, said that Michigan is neck and neck tied, like I said, okay, with one point, I think they said Kamala was ahead by one point in Michigan, which is false by the way, and they said Pennsylvania was tied head to head, neck and neck, there's that talk again, right, and they also said that Wisconsin, Kamala had a six point lead in Wisconsin today. And I had to do one of those cartoon blah, 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 things. That just doesn't make sense. Then I looked at the cross tabs, and lo and behold, CNN did with uh, SSRC polling, 
which is a biased polling company that works for CNN. Make no mistake, okay, they were paid well. Their crosstabs said 2,300 people were polled in three states. So that's like 601, 700 something in the other, seven something in the other. And uh, hold on, we'll get back. I want to check the. I want to check the Halloween decor. That's pretty cool. That's coming along nice. Halloween's in two days. So I think they're pretty much have reached where they're going to reach. Come down here. Uh, a corpse in here with some leaves and a little coffin. We have the totem pole head over here. And we have some stuff up on the roof. We have the donation box. Donation in the ammo can. An ammo can. Let me get this here. Hi, how are you? This is pretty awesome this year. <laughs> how you doing? Pretty good. Are you gonna come through this year? What's that? Are you coming through? Um, I wasn't planning on it, but I think this is pretty awesome house man oh really <laughs> that's yeah, crazy wow so you got people going through the whole house at Halloween yep. kids must love that so when did you guys start doing this? Because I only noticed it a couple years ago, maybe three years ago. Back in 2018, I was supposed to Notice you got a lot of new lighting this year. Believe it or not, I've had, I've had these for a long time. The first year I started doing it, I get stuff on plants mostly. Right. Holiday. Right. Winter, really cheap stuff that nobody wants. That's really awesome. So, yep. I've noticed things like uh, you guys doing Easter, yeah. Christmas. I've seen turkey vlogs though, I've seen some people with turkey vlogs. I've seen people with turkey vlogs with this. Oh, thanks for watching you. Yeah, you, you too. Buy on Halloween, it's free. We strongly encourage donations. Yeah, I saw your donation oh, box. You come in recording all the good stuff. Yeah. Um, I bet I have a flower I wash in my whip and a chainsaw. By no I'm means do I make money off this. The donations are dropped. Well, I come by here many times. I I walk five miles a day at least. Uh, I'm going to be 60 coming up pretty soon, and trying to not die anytime soon. So, <laughs> 60 years young. So I walk 35, 40 miles a week, and I stop come by here year round pretty often. Hey, and I walking, like watching. Yeah, walking's very healthy. Keeps you. Did you read the article? Nope. 
No, nope, I don't subscribe to the newspaper. I'll look it up now, though. I'll probably be able to find it online. Yeah, the reporter named Clem. Uh, he did it called Big and Scary. That was the name of the story. Big and Scary. I will look for that. I'm sure I'll be able to hit that, too. He went all around the city, but mainly the stories about this Yeah. They're always mentioning it to all the story. He's heading over here, but he's going to go here and go there. Well, personally, myself, what I always marvel at is you'll have everything all set up, everything looks nice, and then we'll have like a 70 mile an hour windstorm, screw everything up, like we did a couple times Every last year. year. Every that year. Never fails. Yeah. Uh, I wondered that y the other day we just. Every year, too. Just a minor. Mind bump. you, I'm, I've been working like 84 hours a week. And I think the last Halloween off for the past couple of months, I've been, I've been working a lot. My counterpart got injured. He got by a car. That's where he worked. Mm hmm. I didn't cover any incidents. Signed it. Well, I, I tell people about this all the time. Hopefully somebody's showing up. So. Yeah, that's what makes it work, man, is when the people are here, and I see people coming out, and they're smiling, or I'm in there doing my thing. I don't see the little friendly black cat tonight. He's uh, usually out here. Leo, where's Leo at? Leo this one? That's Leo? Okay. Uh, no. Leo's the big male. The big male, he's got like the, the, the black, black, the black yeah. and white, he's got like the goatee. Right, right. right. He's the big guy. His sister's name is Pixie. Okay. That's what the grandma's name is. All right, guys. Have a good one. So there we have that. We have the uh, pretty cool, I think. Doesn't that look nice? And uh, it's very nice looking setup they have. Uh, come on down if you get a chance. It's located on Gene Street off Savannah Street in Lewiston. Come on down. They got a donation box. Also, you can bring your kids. You can go right through their house. They have everything all decorated. So that's pretty cool, I think. So it was nice to talk to them, find out more about what they do there first time I ever seen them out there to talk because usually when I go by there's uh, younger people uh, teenage girl and boy and as soon as they see somebody coming they usually take off somewhere so anyway so that was really nice so I hope you enjoyed that so in a couple days on Halloween night they're gonna be doing tours through their house it's like a spook house That's pretty interesting. So, what was I talking about before we stopped there? I was talking about voting, rallies, and I was talking about Kamala Harris is not winning. And uh, the reason why I say that is because she's not. Uh, the numbers bear that out. And yes, of course, as I was saying, it's definitely possible for... Um, so many women show up in record numbers that it gives Kamala the win because this is a neck and neck race according to the media which I'm going to argue it's not it's not I think Trump is leading by two three points in most places some places more I think they're under polling Trump again just like they have in the past I don't think they have done very much to change that, but I was talking about the CNN poll that came out for Wisconsin that had Kamala ahead by six points today. So by some miracle, by some miracle, Trump dropped more than five points in a week. So we know that's bullshit. And all that is, is uh, because CNN's last poll was up until October 23rd. Today's the 28th, 29th, 29th. So, actually the 30th, today's the 30th. 
tomorrow is Halloween. So how can they do that in one week? There's no way, okay? So that poll is complete bunk, garbage. That is an enthusiasm poll. That is a poll to make Kamala supporters and Democrats think Kamala's winning instead of doom and gloom from what they're all talking about on the internet. And uh, blatantly obvious, blatantly obvious, because nothing's really changed. Trump's been gaining. Now all of a sudden in Wisconsin, uh, Kamala goes ahead inexplicably by six points while they have her about where she was in Michigan, which is still inflated. She's not winning there. So, all I'm going to tell you is the most reliable pollster, and, and there's even some Democrat pollsters that have admitted this, including Nate Silver, who, by the way, is no longer associated with 538, because that was purchased by ABC News, and their polls are junk, because ABC News is biased, big time. And uh, a lot of these are online and telephone polling. But the CNN crosstabs, I checked that out. And this is what they did. Nobody ever looks at those, not really. So what I was saying before we ran into the Halloween decor was that the... The polling that they did was three states, about 2,100 or 2,700, 2,100, no, 2,500. It's around there somewhere, I don't remember the exact number, but the point is, I think it was 2,100 people in three states. So that's not 2,100 people in Wisconsin or Michigan or Pennsylvania, that was 2,100 total in three states. Because you have to remember that a lot of people have voted already. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to find people left the poll that haven't voted yet. And it's getting more difficult for them. That's the first problem. Uh, the second problem is the crosstabs told me their secret sauce. The crosstabs told me that they oversampled 18, 18 to 34 year olds. So they biased their poll for 18 to 34 year olds, the younger people vote. They didn't bother polling people over 34. I don't know why they chose 34, but that's what the sort of said on the cross tabs. So they got a disproportionate number of young people. And a lot of them, you have to admit, are brainwashed and stupid. The ones that aren't, God bless them, they're voting for Trump. But they oversampled that group and they inserted bias into their polling because they needed a favorable number. So it's a media funded poll and the polling company that did it is political and uh, it's a biased skewered poll so if you see that poll just ignore it but what you can do is you can check out atlas intel atlas intel nate silver who hates trump swears that they have been the most accurate in quite the past few years, at least 10 years. So they've been consistently accurate. And the other thing about this poll that CNN did, which was actually SSRC that did the polling, the company CNN hired, uh, what they said was that besides the oversampling, they said because each state only had about between 600 and 700 
uh, people doing it. They only had about 600 to 700 participants in each state and they oversampled um, 18 to 34 year olds disproportionately. So that gave them a favorable number of plus six. Now, what they don't tell you is if you, you look at the small print in the pole on the cross tabs, it says that it has a 4.9% margin of error either way, which means realistically that's almost 10 points. So that's a 10 point spread. So they oversampled 18 to 34, plus there is a 10 point, 10% one way or the other that it's not accurate. So that means if they say Kamala is six points ahead, Trump could actually be three points ahead of Kamala. See what I'm saying? You get 10 points there to play with. So it's, it's a junk poll. It's specifically designed so the media can come out with their media this week and say Kamala is surging back. She's surging. So you're gonna see that all this week, but it's not true. So I'm just letting you know, that's what they do. You probably know this already, that's fine. These people are dishonest, embarrassingly so at times. And uh, that's just the world we're living in. Trump's gonna win this election. He's gonna win it big. It's not gonna be small. And that's just my personal opinion. If you're looking for some good news, and I guess this is a good place to go, I'm not going to be a homer. I'm not going to say Trump's winning when he's not. I'm not going to say he's going to win big if he's not. I've been very reluctant. I see a lot of people online in doom and gloom right now. What's going to happen for Trump to lose? Everything's always against them. What's it going to be? Well, they're about out of time, folks. They're going to have one last gasp this weekend coming up before the election this is going to be their last chance this weekend coming up day after tomorrow friday if there's any big huge october surprise news that's what it's going to be and i think the october surprise was biden calling half the country garbage the other October surprise was how Kamala mishandled North Carolina. Trump showed up with food and supplies and uh, Kamala's been caught lying about working at McDonald's. Trump did the McDonald's thing and now we get the garbage thing. And uh, this is the kind of thing that has been hurting Kamala's campaign they're out of touch, they're arrogant, they're not with the people, they don't get it. And everything that she's promising is disingenuous, she's never going to do it. And you know, she keeps stealing Trump's ideas. So, she keeps stealing Trump's ideas. did it again uh, yesterday or the day before. I don't even remember what it was. She's stolen so much stuff. She stole the no tax on tips. There was a no tax on Social Security. I don't think she stole that. But uh, the no tax on overtime, she stole that. She stole that one. That's the one she talked about. Uh, daycare, daycare. Women needing help with daycare. Uh, home care, caregivers, that's it. Caregivers, people that are taking care of sick loved ones at home. Trump was going to find a way to help them out. Uh, if the government's going to waste money, that's a good way to do it, in my opinion. You know, I've been a caregiver, I know what it's like. Everything is a financial worry. 
and uh, so anyway he said that's going to be something that he does and then oh yeah of course Kamala did a rally in Washington DC at the Ellipse uh, 70,000 something people who again showed up for a free concert they didn't show up for Kamala okay free concert and uh, it's the only way you can get people to come you're busing people in presumably paying them as well I have no idea but the point is they gotta bring people in by hiring celebrities and um, they're trying to make it look like they're really successful and popular and they have a big movement and they don't all they have is women that's it that's all they got is it gonna be enough I don't know but I can tell you that uh, the big number I saw and this is the big glaring one okay this is the one Democrats are worried about especially in Pennsylvania now in 2020 Joe Biden had 75 percent okay 75 percent of the black male vote 75 percent this year polling says Kamala is getting 55 so they have lost 20 percent of the male black vote that they had in 2020 that's a big number so that tells me a lot of that is around Philadelphia especially Pittsburgh but mainly probably Philadelphia who have done like they did in New York City they've taken in huge numbers of migrants they're upsetting the lives of black people in their neighborhoods with employment specifically that the media ignores and if you say that's what's going on you're branded a racist but the black people are saying it and the media is ignoring them and they're tired of being used and ignored by Democrats and the media and that reflects why the Democrats have lost 20% of the black vote it has been said and this is an important number and it's true that if the Democrats lose 25% of the black vote in Philadelphia the most populated city in Pennsylvania and the one that always elects Democrats that if they lose 25% of the black vote and I'm not talking about Hispanics which they're losing too I'll get to that number in a minute that the Democrats won't win Pennsylvania so I watched a couple of pretty brave a couple of brave documentary people walking around in uh, Philadelphia in through Philadelphia and the suburbs in the area which by the way uh, these McDonald's that Trump stopped in was in a suburb of Philadelphia and uh, there's a lot of new Trump support there's uh, a lot of people that have Trump signs now in their windows they won't put them on the lawn but they have them in their windows and this uh, black guy that they were interviewing said that because of the crap that you might get from your neighbors who hate Trump they said that a lot of the neighbors just put the USA flag up on their lawn which represents Trump according to what this guy said so basically what they're saying is, is if you see a USA flag uh, they're supporting Trump and I believe that but there was a lot of Trump flags and uh, it was really nice to see a bunch of black people supporting Trump in Philadelphia of all places they said the people that live there are tired of it tired of it they said they're tired of going to the store and this guy said I just wanted underarm, underarm deodorant that's all I wanted he said he had to go find somebody to unlock the case they had to make sure that they weren't going to get robbed just to buy underarm deodorant 
they had to have an employee unlock a case because that stuff gets stolen because of Democrat stupidity with not prosecuting people for serious theft crimes for under $998, I think it is, anything under that, it's a misdemeanor, which people don't even bother with because it's a misdemeanor. It's just a ticket. You don't even get arrested for it. So these people just walk into the store, you've seen them online, grab a cart and they just dump less than 900 and something dollars worth of stuff in the cart and it's like free shopping so the stores have been forced to lock everything up i mean that's crazy and you know these people living in the neighborhood they're tired of that crap they're sick of it sick to death of it so that's going to be some votes for Trump this year. Trump said he's gonna take care of it and a lot of these migrants in their neighborhoods that are causing problems are gonna be shipped off out of the country. And that got a lot of people's attention. And Trump will do it too. So, that's what we're gonna have. Very important to talk about this stuff so people understand that uh, these are dire times right now. This is America's last chance. If you don't vote for Donald Trump this time, America's gone because there's just gonna people, be people not strong enough to fight back after another Democrat presidency. They're gonna go rig the whole system. They're gonna prosecute Elon Musk so the next election he won't be there to allow free speech. And uh, that's just what they're gonna do. So, Thankfully, some other people have been speaking up in their own way in surprising places. Uh, we had the LA Times who would not endorse a candidate this year, first time in decades. We just had the Washington Post do the same thing. And uh, a lot of these media companies are following suit and they're doing the same thing. They're not endorsing any candidate because they've come to the harsh realization that they have created now a brand that only talks to a small group. And what I mean by that is all of their programming, all of their writing, all of their news, all of their media is geared towards specifically rabid far left lunatics who represent a small number of people. And uh, we've seen similar instances of this before, having to do with different things. And um, um, you can equate it to anything that comes to your mind. Uh, you know, I love heavy metal. I love heavy metal a lot, but it's not everybody's favorite thing. So if you geared your news network to broadcast only to people who like heavy metal, well, you're not going to get the country music people, the classical, jazz, blues, pop rock. They're not going to watch it. And that's what's happening with the media. They've created a bubble that is now bankrupting them. Because their current viewers and readers, if you say anything favorable about any Republican, they threaten you with boycott and canceling their subscriptions. So, these media companies, are starting to say, well, we're not going to play sides. So they're starting to change their ways. It's not going to be easy for them. You're not going to see it this election, but you're going to see it in upcoming um, elections. They're going to be more because they realize where they're getting killed. They're getting killed with the independent people online. Uh, Daily Caller, Daily Wire, Washington Examiner, all these smaller news companies are getting all the clicks and views because they're not spewing all that propaganda like they are. So they will try to come back from it uh, financially, but we'll see what happens. And um, so anyway, that's all I was talking about with that. 
Let's uh, flip this around. I'll walk this way past this beautiful church at Bates College. Right here. So anyway, uh, you know, the real problem that the mainstream media has, uh, specifically a lot of the New York Times, if you get out of your rabid base that you have, the only people still watching and reading that, you know, CNN, even Fox News, is people over 40, uh, the older crowd. So those people are gonna start dying off and the young people aren't watching. That's just the fact, it's the way it is. The internet's a big place. Quality of streaming has really increased. I mean, look how good the quality of this video is when I upload it. And I'm talking about this stuff. Now, I'm not a news person, I'm not this or that, but people have other ways to communicate now and have their voices heard. Now, I do have to be careful because I have gotten two strikes now on YouTube, actually three. I got three. One had to do with the Trump word. Two of them had to do with uh, the vaccines, or as I call the flippity gibbets. So that's what we're going to call it from now on uh, to avoid Google censorship. Google is now censoring about the flippity gibbets again. So it makes me wonder what's up with that as we get into. Uh, cold and flu season this year. It may just be, you know, Big Pharma is a big sponsor of Google and they make millions of dollars off Big Pharma and uh, they don't want anything bad said about the vaccines because it hurts their advertising bottom end. Who knows? Or it could be something much bigger. Could be something much bigger, like they know something we don't, but that's complete conspiracy land at this point. But uh, anyway, uh, they are clamping down on that for sure, on the rhetoric of that. So uh, we have to be cognizant of that. And there's nothing there to talk about until there's something to talk about. So until the flibbity gibbet is actually something again, I'm not going to discuss the flibbity gibbet. No more. Uh, Flippity gibbet speak. Thank you. When you slow down to let me cross, which is nice. So anyway, I'm gonna walk on this way. And we're walking past the Bates College campus here. It looks beautiful. I don't know how the lighting on here looks. It might look okay or it might be dark. I don't know. But anyway, I am walking my five mile route. So, but I am seriously not kidding you at all. Uh, uh, Trump is about ready to win this. Only six more days after today, five more. It's like, wow, right? Voting day is Tuesday. So I'm gonna to try to check the weather forecast for certain parts of the country that are important for turnout. I don't wanna see any place in the country where it's gonna be pouring rain all day or cold with snow. <clears throat> Cause uh, we don't want that. I think this year though, people would be willing to cross crawl across a broken glass to vote, I think. So, this is a nice looking campus here. They've done a good job with it. Years ago, it just looked like all 1800s, which, you know, had a good look also, but they tore down a lot of the apartment buildings that were on these corners, these older structures. Uh, a couple of them were nice ones built in the early 1900s, but, they needed new buildings, and here we have it, progress. 
we need more space to corrupt the young minds and uh, brainwash and indoctrinate the kids. But I digress. So anyway, I'm going to walk on up this way. And, um, you know, in all seriousness, though, um, you know, the biggest problem that Kamala has, and I'm going to talk about Hispanics, but, you know, just being down 74% to 55% among the black male vote for Kamala is really going to hurt her in states like Michigan and Pennsylvania. Will it be enough? We'll see. So, uh, the other thing is, is uh, Hispanics, Hispanic vote, very important. And uh, it's really unfortunate that they have to use this racism in the media all the time. It's really a terrible thing. It's not good for anybody, uh, mainly because it's not true, for one thing. And, um, you know, you would think people would wake up and stop allowing them to use them for elections. And, uh, but we're still waiting. Uh, people may wake up, they may not. We'll see. Hopefully they do. So I'm going to cut across here. I'll cut across this way. Very mild this evening. And I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt with a, another long sleeve shirt on top of that. And I'm wearing a hoodie on top of that. And now I'm sweating pretty good. Which is what you want when you walk. And uh, like I said, it's in the low 50s, but there's a lot more moisture in the air. That's why I will always say 95 degrees in North Carolina, South Carolina is miserable. And 95 degrees in Arizona and Nevada is hot, but it's not miserable in the same way. It's not a sweat box. It's very dry. And um, if I had to pick between the two, I would pick dry heat any day. It's not any less dangerous as far as cooking out in the sun and you don't have any water, but you can breathe. Your skin can breathe. So when you have 52 degrees like it is now and the air is bone dry in the wintertime, it's a whole different thing. It feels much cooler and colder and more chilly than it is. Right now, this feels pretty comfortable at 52 degrees because there's moisture in the air, like a sauna. We're getting some of that humidity from the southern part of the country up here, which, by the way, people that live down south thinks this feels wonderfully and probably they're chilly, cold. And for us, it actually feels warm. So, anyways, I'm just talking, I'm just talking. So I'm going to hang a left here. We'll cut through this way by the Lewiston Armory, which I don't think it's an armory anymore. It may be. I know uh, FEMA has an office in here. So quite possibly they may. It's still, it's called the Memorial Armory. I see cars parked here. I hear whistles inside. I think somebody's playing basketball. They got a pretty decent basketball court. Yep, I can hear a whistle. And there's people in there that are playing basketball. But we're going to keep on. So, what else is there to talk about with the election? Oh, voting. There's been a lot of reports of shenanigans. And um, a lot of these, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Uh, a lot of these conservatives online are trying to drum up controversy, probably for monetized clicks. And it's unfortunate because they're not doing anybody any good service at all. They're getting people to panic. They're spreading doom and gloom. 
Oh, they're going to cheat. They're going to steal the whole thing. First of all, nothing like we saw in 2020 is going to happen this year. Uh, even in Pennsylvania, it's absentee voting. Uh, they just got caught making false voter registrations. That is a problem. That is cheating. But they will be prosecuted. Detectives were on it quickly. They investigated it. And now they're going to try to trace how many of these registrations are false and phony compared to how many they gathered by this company that were legit. The FBI is involved in that. They're doing everything that you would want them to do. And it's not one of those things where they're just saying they're doing it. They are doing something about it. They had a very good press conference for it, I watched. And uh, they put the message out while they were doing the press conference, do not get involved in election fraud in this election because you will be arrested. So when people are out there saying that publicly on a press conference in the local media, uh, we shouldn't have anything bad to say about that. So anyway, um, other things that they're doing, they are promoting the illegals. The illegals are voting. So. Why are they doing that? Because it gets people irate and angry and it gets them to um, click on post and make ad revenue for people. So that's what's going on with that. And I really absolutely wish they would not do that. It's kind of pissing me off actually uh, because there was one recently saying there's a video of people that don't speak English being waved ahead so they can vote ahead of people that were in line. And that was from the Gateway Pundit, which I usually like at Gateway Pundit. But uh, the problem is, this was clickbait, uh, because it was only about 20 people, and it's not a widespread problem. Probably was just a miscommunication. And nobody really knows exactly why those people were there. And they might have had an appointment ahead of anyway. Head on out of here. I had to make a pit stop. So, uh, that leads me to other things where the rules are different in different states. <clears throat> and um, you can't just take one instance and say, see, there it is, they're going to steal the election. Millions of people have already voted in Pennsylvania. There's still millions more to vote. And you're talking about 20 voters. You're talking about a canvassing company registering 2,500 illegal registrations, which uh, Trump falsely claimed at the rally tonight was 2,500 ballots, but then he said potential ballots. So he's trying to make it sound more of a problem than it is, but it's good that he says that because the people in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, don't want to be embarrassed by that, by Trump talking about it. So that pressures them. And uh, also, there was a uh, Republican councilwoman who the machines were messing up in Bucks County. The machines were messing up and people weren't able to vote. And they were telling people to leave, the machines are broken. And she said no. No, it is against the law to send people in line to vote, get to vote. You're supposed to give them a provisional ballot. And they wouldn't do it. And she made a scene, said, you can't do that. That's against the law. So they had her arrested because you're not supposed to intimidate other voters. So they used that lo loophole and uh, the Trump campaign, as well as the Republican Party, filed a lawsuit today because they had her arrested and thrown out illegally. So the Republicans are right on it this year. They're watching. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we still can't do anything about... I'm going to flip the camera around. Uh, we still can't do anything about, uh, let's say... You know, we have a ballot drop-off box. Now, Maine here, 
in Lewiston, we have one ballot drop-off box outside City Hall. Uh, that's it, as far as I know. And there's a security camera. And when you go up to the box, there's a sign that says you're being recorded. That's what I want to see. So in Georgia, Republicans went ahead and did something on their own, and Democrats filed a lawsuit, and the judge actually overturned it and said you cannot video surveil people voting. Because that has to do with the Georgia Constitution, which is different than the Maine Constitution. But the point I'm making is that I went to go vote, put my ballot in the drop-off box, and I saw that I was being video recorded. Now that keeps people honest, okay? It also protects people from being harassed at the mail drop-off box. And, uh, cause you got video right there. Why would anybody have a problem with that? You know? So, it's really quite ridiculous that every time a Republican does something, the automatic response is a lawsuit from Democrats to reverse it. Doesn't matter what it is. That's why I was saying that, you know, Republicans should start saying voter ID should not be allowed. We, we don't want voter ID because the Democrats will sue to have voter ID. It's like child psychology with these idiots. So it's literally anything Republicans want. It doesn't matter if it makes sense or if it's good for people. We're just going to file lawsuits against it as a regular thing. And that's what they're doing. So that's what happened with that in Georgia. And the other instance of that is Virginia, where Governor Youngkin instituted a long-standing law that is on the books to purge the voter rolls. He removed 6,000 illegal voters, voters that have either died or they were illegals that were found. 6,000. So they went through the voter rolls that were registrations that were done through the vehicle registration and welfare and they found a whole bunch of people that should not be driving, uh, not driving but voting, registered to vote. So Youngkin did what other governors in Virginia have done as standard practice is to get dead voters and things like that, or illegible voters, off the voter rolls because of quote-unquote democracy. So, do you remember Governor Tim Kaine of Virginia? He used to be the head of the DNC. Uh, he's one of the people that got the nomination for Obama, and he was promised that if he did that someday he'd be nominated for vice president in a future election, which he was with Hillary. And uh, he was the governor of Virginia. What did Tim Kaine do as governor of Virginia? He purged the voter rolls. Because back then it was, oh, the Republicans are going to cheat by using illegal votes. So when they think Republicans are getting an advantage, they do common sense things to get rid of it. But when it helps them, and a Republican suggests it, well, they file, file lawsuits. So that's what happened with that just recently. But the good news is the Supreme Court just said that those names, 6,000 of them, should be removed. And the governor had every right to do that. Thank you for wasting our time. So those 6,000 will be removed, but here's the catch. They're not gonna be removed between now well, actually, what that judge has said was it was too late to remove those. And Youngkin just got his way today. They are going to remove those. That's the best understanding I have of it, anyway. There's so much stuff to read about right now. I'm just trying to cover the, cover the loose bases. So anyway, that's where we are on that. I would love to see paper ballots. I would love to see same day voting. And I'd love to see voter ID, which is supported overwhelmingly at around 80 to 
by all voters in both parties, both major parties, the independents and the libertarians as well. So when I say both parties, I don't mean there's only two parties. I don't mean to be, uh, I don't mean to leave people out and be rude. But you know what I'm saying. So anyway, with that being said, we still have a few days to go. It's gonna be a very important election. I think what you're gonna see between now and over the next five or six days is you're going to see more Trump support. And what I'll point to in discussing that, do you see that sign? In 2020, if there was any sign like that up anywhere around the city that said Trump on it, somebody tore it up and it was removed. Period. There just was no Trump signs anywhere on a street like this in 2020. And this year, these signs have been there for weeks. Nobody's tearing them up. I'm not seeing that same animosity. I think people are tired of it. <laughs> now that doesn't mean they're gonna vote for Trump, but I think things have finally changed after nine years of this. I think people have finally said, God, I just wanna get back to how things used to be. What was it that Trump did so bad? I could pay my rent, I could have food. Things weren't bad, and he had a pandemic given to him, which, you know, any common sense would tell anybody that that's not going to help any president. It didn't help Biden when he came into office. In fact, more people died when Biden was president, and uh, some people were just going to die. Some people are just unhealthy. So I'm not going to get into the flibbity gibbet. No flibbity gibbet speak. So, anyway, this is an exciting time to be alive right now because if Trump loses this election, we are all so screwed. And I will give you an example. This will be a green light for the Democratic Party to really just go all fucking gun ho like California. Trump was their best shot and we just beat him. There's nobody else that's going to be able to do that except maybe DeSantis, but We'll take care of him later. We're gonna change rules and we're gonna change laws. Now the good news nobody's talking about is that let's say Kamala Harris wins. God forbid. Let's say she wins and you feel like the whole world has ended. Uh, the way things usually go, that voters usually know who's going to win and who isn't. That's why I think if Trump wins, I don't think the Republicans are going to keep Congress. They could, and that would only depend on the public if the public is like, you know, we're so tired of the left. We're going to give Trump everything he needs because Biden and Harris were that bad. And they go ahead and vote for Congress people and senators. Now it's pretty much a given the Republicans are going to win the Senate. So that's good news, because if Kamala wins the presidency, basically she's going to end up being powerless and she's really going to be kept in check. She's going to have to do everything by executive action, which, make no mistake, is going to be bad. It's going to get us into bad places in the world, maybe even World War III. Uh, we might get nuked to death and it won't be a problem for anybody anymore. So that's how important this election is. And I'm looking at Kamala Harris talking on video and on CNN and on clips and I cannot imagine anybody electing her. I just can't see it. I mean, I kind of felt like that about Biden, but at the same time, Biden's had 50 years of experience. He knew what to say or not say, even though he had gibberish at times. But because of the pandemic, they kept him to a script and teleprompters, and it worked. They tried to do the same thing with Kamala. That's how well it worked with Biden. But it got to a point where they knew that wasn't going to work, and she had to come out and talk, and that's why she went down in the polls. 
So thankfully, she has been out talking because people can see with their own eyeballs and ears uh, that she's not the brightest light bulb in the ceiling, as Trump would say. So that's been good because coupled with Biden just calling half the country garbage is probably going to help Trump get over the hump that he was already over anyway. So I think uh, we're about to have a really good result coming up. And like I said, we may even know who won the election on election night. A lot of the experts are saying, nah, we're probably not going to. We might not know for days. 2020, we didn't know who won the election until uh, Saturday, I believe. Uh, we had the election, and I think it was August 8th. It was voting day. Uh, actually, that can't be because I think 8th is when they announced that he won. That was uh, the Saturday after the election. So it was a few days, and it was because of Pennsylvania. So, uh, if I remember right, Wisconsin, we found out the next, next afternoon. And uh, did not like the result of that, even though before the election started, Biden had a seven-point lead in Wisconsin. And he ended up winning by less than 1%. So the polling was heavily off on that. I believe Trump, if he's going to win one of the Great Lakes states, Wisconsin would be the first one he wins. And uh, the real thing though that's interesting is he's gonna do a rally in Virginia. So now Kamala, according to some internal polling I heard, uh, Kamala's only leading by two points in Virginia. That's within the margin of error. So Trump has a shot of winning Virginia. The good news is Virginia, as I just said, that's why I set this up this way, just got rid of 6,000 illegal votes off the voter rolls, and they use paper ballots. No more electronic voting in Virginia. That's done with. They passed legislation and they have switched to paper ballots which Glenn Youngkin signed into law. So that's going to be good for everybody. Uh, the other good news is, is Hurricane Helene in North Carolina. It looks like a whole bunch of people in North Carolina in record numbers are voting. So that means they had some good leadership in North Carolina for these people that got flooded out. They're obviously being able to vote. Uh, don't know yet if any shenanigans come from that. I don't think so from what I see. Uh, the other good thing with absentee ballots and the difference between mail-in and absentee. Mail-in is where the state just mails out ballots to everybody like they did in the pandemic. And absentee is the voter contacts the state and request a ballot. And then you have one sent to you, which has its own barcode, usually in every state, and uh, has your signature on it when you vote. And um, so you can track the damn thing on the internet, like I did, even in Maine here, where we use paper ballots. And that's why I'm happy about Virginia, because we use paper ballots here and I don't question election results here. And we usually know who won, unless we have an independent or two that get enough votes to cause all the candidates to get under 50%, which normally in the old days would have a runoff election. And I understand the argument against not having a runoff and having ranked choice voting. The argument being that when you get less than 50% and you have a runoff election, everybody got geared up to vote on that day. And then, you know, like we're gonna have the election November 5th, okay? Just for an example. Let's say we had a runoff election and okay, everybody votes on November 5th. 
now you have a runoff election. The runoff election date is going to be December 5th, 30 days later, a month. Now it's winter here. Could have blizzards. We've had blizzards in the first week of December. It's cold. Uh, a lot of older people, when it gets cold, their bones get cold. They're less likely to go vote. They'll probably request an absentee ballot. But traditionally, whenever they have a runoff election, the turnout is pretty low. So I understand the argument to have ranked choice voting. The problem I have with ranked choice voting is it's a form of cheating for Democrats. And why do I say that? Well, because when the time comes and Republicans start winning using ranked choice voting, they're going to try to get rid of it. So. And I've explained ranked choice voting. I'll explain it again. Now, we had five. Five candidates for president on our ballot this year. Five. Some guy I've never heard of from Texas. Can't even tell you his name. Then we had Cornell West. A black dude, very smart, intellectual. Uh, but he hates Trump and he's, he's a leftist. I wouldn't call him a Marxist, but it's pretty close. So he ran as an independent. Then you have Jill Stein. And uh, then you have Trump and you have Kamala Harris. So that's five altogether. Um, RFK was removed from our ballot, which is the other Supreme Court case that did not go our way this week. Too close to the election, and I do agree with that. It's already here. The ballots have already been printed up, and RFK is going to be on the ballots in Pennsylvania and Michigan. Can't do anything about it. I think... I think enough people are going to know that RFK is not on the ballot, but what I'm worried about is people that were going to hold their nose and vote for Trump because they don't like Kamala either are not going to show up and vote at all, or if they do, they're going to vote for RFK as a write-in. And states usually have an approved list of write-ins, and RFK was also removed from the approved write-in list in Maine. So you can't just go vote for president and vote for some other guy that's not on the approved list of write-ins. So that's how it is in Maine. I don't know where it is anywhere else. I don't really know. Uh, the other thing too is uh, when we have things like that, um, quite possibly uh, somebody, oh wow, look at this. See this here? We walked by here just a little while ago. And I know you probably can't see that. I'm gonna turn the my flashlight on. All right, I'll put the flashlight on. See this? Now, I don't know what happened, but somebody somebody drove right up here on the lawn, tore it up, see that? And uh, they dug it all up, backing out. So that right there was not there when we walked by a minute ago. So, I'm glad that didn't happen when I was walking by. I might have got smooshed. So anyway, somebody did a bad thing for whatever reason. This time of year, very doubtful that they had a bee inside their car trying to sting them. But anyways, so uh, what, what was I talking about? I was talking about uh, RFK and the ballots. Um, I don't think it's going to cause serious problems. Um, 
But, you know, if enough people choose RFK just to send a message, that kind of thing, I'm just going to vote for RFK. They left them on the ballot, and I don't like Trump or Kamala. I'm going to vote for this one. Does it really matter? Well, they didn't want to vote for Trump or Kamala to begin with, so a lot of times these people might not go vote. Um, it might help whoever's running for Congress. Maybe they like the Republican congressman, but they don't like Trump. So they'll vote for RFK. Uh, either way, uh, somewhere between half a point and maybe 1%. Um, hopefully they don't, but they may end up voting for RFK for spite. But I think uh, pr people pretty much know that our RFK voters, they know he's not in it, so it might not be a big deal. And I'll equate it to the primary voting we had in Maine. When I got my ballot, I had Ramaswamy on it, other Republicans. And at that time, it was just Nikki Haley and Trump, and everybody else on it was negated. So they had all dropped out, and I knew about it and didn't vote for them. And uh, Trump ended up getting the, enough of the percentage uh, to resemble a red state here in Maine because they tried to kick him off the ballot and people were pissed about it. So there's a lot more, there's a lot more Trump support than people are, are talking about in the media. And we're going to see it on voting day, election day. And it's going to be glorious. I'm waiting for it. It's going to be really awesome. Uh, we're going to see some history made. And if I've said it a thousand times, I'll say it again, okay? Nobody ends up in a historic photograph like the fight, fight, fight photograph with the flag behind him, Secret Service on him, like they were posing. The picture is so perfect because that photograph was taken at the right split second. I've seen some of the other series. I've seen a few of the other photographs from that series. And they, they look okay, but none of them were as good as that one. That was perfect. That was just as good as the uh, Victory in Japan Day, VJ Day, Times Square, where that sailor grabs that nurse, tips her over, and plants a kiss on her. The war is finally over. Let's celebrate. I randomly almost sexually assaulting a stranger. <laughs> it's a long war, okay? Maybe he'd, maybe people deserved it. I don't know. I don't know what the mindset was then. But anyway, uh, so the other picture I can think of is the Iwo Jima photograph. Well, they're raising the flag, which I've described that on this walk before. It's actually a staged photograph. The original photograph had uh, soldiers in tattered pants. Um, I had read that one of them had his butt cheek hanging out. They had just been through hell. They had shredded clothing. A couple of them had blood on them, probably somebody else's. And uh, they ripped, they put up a flag. And uh, they put it up. It was a tattered, ripped American flag. Um, they just had to get a flag up. And when that flag went up, for all the thousands of people that died taking that island, that was like a big, huge victory. Yeehaw from everybody. And the top brass were like, well, did anybody get that on film? Oh, crap. All right, let's set it up. Let's do it. So they redid it with a nice, big, beautiful looking American flag. Um, Marines and beautiful new looking uniforms. And uh, ended up being one of the biggest recruiting tools they used. Because up until that point, basically we had been getting our ass kicked. We had Guadalcanal, we had other problems. We had, uh, we had the, uh, the famous Japanese uh, death march in Bataan. And uh, we sent people into war because we had to go with radios. They couldn't go more than a mile. They were the old World War I type. Um, they couldn't broadcast very well. It was new technology. Uh, the soldiers had outdated weapons. 
and uh, they just were not ready, but they had to go. Something had to be done immediately, and they went, and uh, it did not go well. We had some battles at the beginning of the war where thousands of Americans were killed and the public were starting to panic. So that Iwo Jima photo rejuvenated the entire country. The people in the photograph became famous. Clint Eastwood made a movie about it. And uh, it was bittersweet for the people that were in the photographs. Uh, one of them was a Native American. He uh, was not treated well when he came back. And uh, he was definitely used by the government. And uh, they went on a tour across the country and they were recruiting people. Uh, part of the problem they had was they got taken out of combat to do that and they felt like they had a duty to go back and fight. And a couple of them really had issue with that. And uh, they felt guilty. They felt very guilty that they were here recruiting people to go fight. And, uh, you know, sometimes they would be asked, how come you guys were there and did this? And, you know, you're not there fighting. So, anyway, it's a very interesting movie Clint Eastwood did. I highly recommend watching it. I don't remember the name of it. But, uh, anyway, I've seen it a couple times. So it's good. So, uh, we're continuing on right now, and uh, I never know what I'm going to talk about on my walks, and uh, that just popped out of the blue, because we were talking about Trump's historic photograph, and uh, when the election's over, we're going to have all kinds of stuff to talk about after the election, good, bad, or indifferent. Hopefully it's good, I'm pretty sure it's going to be. Like I said, personally, I believe Trump's going to win. And he's going to win by a lot. And, uh, <clears throat> well, I'm not going to say yet. A couple more days. After this weekend, I'll give my opinion Sunday on that walk. The day before voting day. Which is Monday. It's the day before voting day. So, uh, Sunday or Monday, I will officially tell you who I think is going to win. I feel right now I think Trump's going to win, but I'm going to end up making a prediction <laughs> for the first time ever. I've never done that before. I've always crossed my fingers like everybody else, bit my nails, but this year I'm taking a different approach. I spent a lot more time examining a lot more stuff, staying away from the mainstream media for one thing, who are basically full of shit on everything. And uh, I will give my honest assessment whether or not it'll be close, what states, who's going to get what. We're definitely going to know more by the end of this weekend. And what I'm really waiting for is the news cycle this weekend, which is important. Anything could pop up. Um, like I said on one of my walks, we can end up having a doctored AI tape that looks like an old VHS tape of Trump doing something really bad with Epstein. They've really been trying to sell that this year and make it a thing in the media. And uh, they've done everything else except that. So that would not surprise me. And how dishonest the media has been, um, they very well, after the election, would go, oh, golly, I guess it wasn't true. We're so sorry. But by then it'll be too late. So AI stuff is really good. All you need is a couple of world leading experts that somebody paid off to say that it looks legit. It looks real. All my experience I have with this, this looks real. Trump is a child rapist. And that's all it would take. And unfortunately, everybody is so corrupt, we know that could happen. So let's hope it doesn't. But I'm just throwing that out there as a possibility. These people are scrupulous. Scrupulous. Let's, say, let's put it that way. So anyway, thank you for walking with me. Click like and subscribe. Share the content. 
And uh, God bless America. Say a prayer for this election. I really mean that, especially Pennsylvania with regard to uh, interceding. I pray for interceding, to intercede in the election if they're cheating, to have them do something where they get caught before the election. Something that you can prove without a doubt. And uh, we'll pray for Ted Cruz and cheating that they're probably going to do in Texas. Because they want Ted Cruz's seat really badly in Texas. That's like a stepping stone to turning the state blue. Because once you get somebody in there, it's difficult to remove them. And Ted Cruz at times is not liked by a lot of people, voters. So a lot of his areas are bipartisan and he's pretty conservative. So he struggles every election he has. He has a hard time. It's never an easy cakewalk for him. So right now, some polls say it's tied. Other ones say he's ahead by three points. So if he's ahead by three points, he should be okay. Uh, he's definitely gonna have to try a different way of campaigning this year, which he's been doing because they have had some changes with the population there. Uh, specifically, a lot of people from California they left California because of liberal policies, and they're liberals, and they hate Republicans. But they moved to Texas so they can have more money. Those people. So, anyway, uh, a lot of San Antonio, Houston, I believe, places like that. That is in Ted Cruz's, uh, I believe those are two of the big cities. I could be wrong. But, anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for walking with me. God bless you. Say a prayer for America and Donald Trump and the election. This is very serious. Get God involved and say some prayers. We will talk to you later. Click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you on the next walk. Bye-bye, folks.